We begin with hymn number 726. Hymn number 726. You are very welcome to the house of the Lord this blessed Lord's Day. May the Lord bless you Amen. for coming to the house of the Lord. Just as we studied this morning, before we got here in this great sanctuary, the Lord knew before you even put on your clothing that you're coming to the house of God, that you are coming. And I want to believe he was here ready to bless everyone that is present here. And for our internet audience, may the Lord bless you too, wherever you are located. We pray that the same God who is with us here will bless you as well. Amen. And perhaps you live locally or visiting and you'd like to come in, you are very welcome. We are located on number 95 Fenham Road. This is the um, Apostolic Faith Church, SE 15. 1 AE. We shall be glad to receive you if you are able to join us. But if you cannot, we can as well just blend our voices together since distance is not a problem for God. Wherever you are, we can blend our voices to sing to God and worship Him. Okay, we continue with 726 that says, Peace, perfect peace. In this dark world of sin, the blood of Jesus whispers peace within. Amen. Peace, perfect peace with sorrows surging round. On Jesus' bosom, not but calm is found. Peace, perfect peace. Death shadowing us and ours. Jesus has vanquished death and all its powers. Amen. Let's sing that uh, um, with high expectation. And with meaning, we take this is one, this is one, three, five, and seven. One, three, five, and seven. One, three, five, and seven at um, four, two time. <laughs> from the same hymn book, 1-4, number 14, Be gone, unbelief, my Savior is near. Amen. Though that be my way, since he is my guide, it's mine to obey, it is to provide. Yes. Let's say this is 1, 2, 5, and 6. One, two, five, and six. Hymn number 14. 
one, two, five, and six. Be gone on the list. Seven hundred and ten. Congregational prayer to be given by Brother Mike 
And that song will be number 61. We are singing all the three verses at the end of which Brother Mike will lead us in congregational prayer.
Oh Lord God, Amen. Lord Jesus, Amen. the high priest, Amen. who is set on the right hand Amen. of the throne Amen. of the majesty yes. in the heavens. Amen. Come and minister to us. Amen. Come and minister to us. Amen. A minister of the sanctuary, Amen. of the true tabernacle. Amen. Come and minister unto us. Amen. The tabernacle which is said by God, yeah. which is speech by God, oh, yeah. and not man. Oh, yeah. Come and minister unto us yeah. this morning. Come and minister yeah. salvation, yeah. sanctification, yeah. baptism yeah. of the Holy Spirit yeah. and fire yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. Come and minister unto us yeah. deliverance yeah. from sin yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. Come and minister unto us yeah. healing to our body Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Come and minister to us Amen. understanding Amen. of the gospel Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Come and minister to us Amen. freedom, Amen. the liberty of God, Amen. the liberty of Jesus, Amen. freedom from sin Amen. so that we can make heaven. Amen. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit, Amen. in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Scripture reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 4. Read from verse 35 to 41. The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 4, beginning from verse 35. And the same day 
when even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships, 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind Amen. and said unto the sea, Peace be still. Amen. And the wind ceased. Amen. And there was a great calm. Amen. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? 41 and the last. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
back to the Bible reading that we've just had. The Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. I'd like to read again verses 37 and 38. Mark chapter 4, verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he, that is Jesus, was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou know that we perish? Does Jesus really care? Yes. 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 That was the question the disciples were putting to him here. In all that we are going through, in all that is happening right now, does Jesus really care? Yes. I would like to encourage everyone listening to me that yes, Jesus cares. Amen. We may have situations that we cannot explain. We may have situations that we don't have answers. But certainly, truly, without any shadow of doubt, Jesus cares. Amen. If the enemy is telling anybody that your situation is a sign that Jesus doesn't, I want to encourage you today that you only need to tell that voice that get back to the pit of hell yes. where you are coming from. Yes. For I know yes. that my Jesus yes. is real yes. and he cares. Yes. This is something very interesting in this passage. Jesus Christ and his disciples, they were in the ship. And now there was a great storm, not a small storm. A great storm. And Jesus was sleeping. And the disciples were troubled. Same condition, different effects. Yes. Yes. I don't know whether it has happened to you before. For Stella and I, the same atmospheric condition in the same room, you see me perspiring, and Stella will be crying that she's cold. The same condition, bringing two different effects. I don't know much about the anatomy of the human body, and I don't know what is responsible for that, but I know that even in life, truly, a condition that is the same can be applied to a group of people, or even two individuals, and they will have different effects. In this situation before us, it is the prayer of my heart that that condition that we make others to doubt, that same condition that we make others to be cursing God, that same condition that may be making others' faith to be wading away, 
that you will be on Jesus' side. Amen. That that condition will encourage you. Amen. And people will be wondering, is it not the same condition? Jesus was sleeping. They were troubled. In your storm, in my storm, may we take side with Jesus. Amen. A great storm. Perhaps, you know, the end of the story says that there was a great calm. Not a small calmness, a great calm. Some people want great things to happen to them. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Wonderful things. Magnificent things that you want to stand up and testify. Mm -hmm. And let the whole place shake. Mm -hmm. That testimony must be based on something great as well. Yeah. A great storm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what you are going through now. We have an example before us to encourage you and I that the end of that great storm, in Jesus' name, Amen. is going to be a great call. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes we determine what is true or false, what is strong or weak, genuine or counterfeit, by applying some force or some fire or some heat. And I pray that when your faith and my faith will be tested and that fire will be applied, may we not doubt Jesus. Amen. The situation here was very clear. This great storm, where did it come from? Where Jesus was. I, I, I know no, no much details were given in the scriptures, but I believe that that boat, that ship, had no leak. Mm -hmm. The storm was so much that it was so beaten and then water just gushing in. And what does the Bible say? In that verse uh, uh, 37, so it was now full. You can see the extent. But where was that coming from? No doubt it's coming from Satan. No doubt it's coming from the enemy. But praise God. Christ was already in the vessel. And instead for the disciples to be smiling at the storm, forgive me, pardon me, if I were to be there, I think I would join these disciples. They don't, don't think that I know it well that I should be smiling. But I thank God for the Bible that is telling you and I that truly and indeed, if Christ is in the vessel, we should be smiling at the storm. That is the difference between God's children and those who do not know God. This was coming from the enemy. And same way many times, we don't know where many things that are happening to us are coming from. More especially many times when we have searched our lives. More especially many times when we have, even when God has revealed to us certain things that he's not pleased with, and we have confessed, and he has forgiven us, and we know assuredly in our heart that our sins are gone, and yet things are happening that we just don't understand. If this can happen to Jesus, I'm not in the mind of Satan whether he knew Jesus was there or not, but he forgot that the master of the ocean and waves, the one that has created the storm. The one that is in control of the storm is right there in the vessel. And I pray that in the vessel of your life, in the vessel of my life, we will allow Jesus to be inside us through the experience, the genuine experience of born again, 
salvation from sin. Having the testimony that I have been delivered from sin. When I give my testimony about salvation, I tell people that it's no more struggling. I lived through that life as a young person. When you want to make a resolution that I don't want to do this again. And you will struggle and you will try. No, I don't want to do that. And before you know it, you find yourself failing. But when God saved my soul, when Jesus saved my soul, he removed the desire. Amen. And he gave me the power Amen. to go and sin no more. Amen. After I have confessed my sins to him. That is the salvation I'm talking about. Yes. When that salvation is real and we have it in our heart, that is Jesus taking his rightful position in our heart by the grace of God. Whatever comes, that's when we meet Jesus there. Yes. And when Jesus is there, it's all solved. Amen. Amen. With Jesus, in this particular ship, we know Satan brought it. And, uh, of course, Jesus was there. And when he will bring that to you and me, I pray that our faith will not fail. Amen. That our faith will not shrink. Amen. That we will not shake. Amen. When the storms of life are raging, we can pray, stand by me. Amen. I don't know what revealed my, just thinking about the event of the week. And um, I told uh, some of our ministers that gathered here yesterday after the prayer meeting, we had another meeting in my office, and um, I said, you know, I, I, I have a sermon that I know on the rota, I'm the one to preach here this morning. And I, I have preached, and I had something that God put, I believe, was in my mind. But with the event of the week, something was coming to my mind again that uh, we all need encouragement. Yeah. And then I was just thinking of God, how will you, what will you use to encourage us? And God directed me to this passage of the scriptures to let us know that storm will always rage. Things will always happen. And when they happen, he's in control. Amen. He knows what he's doing. And he still cares. Amen. That confirmed to me just this morning. I, um, I, I, on Sunday morning, I do open my phone because of other things that may come from one branch or another. And this text came. And it says, having God in your boot doesn't mean that you will not face any storm. Mm -hmm. Just this morning, I was here yesterday. I didn't leave this place yesterday, maybe until around 9 or 8 or whatever, after the prayer meeting in the morning. And I finished everything I wanted to do. And this just came this morning. And it says that, um, but it means that no storm can sink your boot. Amen. I quickly replied the brother. I said, God, it's like God revealed your word, the word of encouragement and the word of exhortation that he has given us today to you. We will have storm. Let us get it right. Things will happen that we will not be able to uh, explain very well. We do tell our young people this and we pray God will help them to understand in terms of they just want the reason why. Why this? Why that? It, there's nothing wrong in that. Talking to Anu on Friday, we got into this discussion again after the um, Sunday school conference. And I was trying to explain some things. I said, you know what? There are many things. And perhaps it's only Christian maturity that will get us to that stage where we know that there are many things that we cannot understand. Mm -hmm. And we don't have answer for especially when it comes to spiritual things, yes. you just don't want to question it. You don't understand it. And many times you ask God, God will not explain. Yes. And it takes maturity Amen. to know that there are certain things yes. that you just have to take at its faith and face value. Yes. So storm will come. Sure. But it is the prayer of my heart that we will be able to pray that stand by me and we stand by us. Amen. And our ship will not capsize. Amen. 
Amen. Well, it may be rocky, yes. But in the name of Jesus, Amen. it will remain afloat. Amen. When we have the storm of sickness, we have the storm of joblessness, the storms of problems and needs and long suffering and disappointment, the storms of fear of the unknown, waiting for answers from God, the storm, discouragement, even the dread of the tomb can be a storm. But we want to pray that when these storms are confronting us, Jesus, stand by me. Amen. Be by my side. Amen. When we are God's children, we can say, storms do not alarm me. They sometimes must cease. Yes. Trials cannot harm me. Amen. For I have blessed peace. Amen. Troubles do not fret me. Amen. They cannot abide. Amen. Though they may beset me, in Jesus I will hide. Amen. All I trust may fail me. It will matter no more. All the worst commotion about me may roam. Get this. Get this. There is no stormy ocean Amen. on Kenyan shore. Amen. May God take you there. Amen. May God take me there. Amen. I believe the Bible. In heaven, there is no storm. In heaven, no more pain. Amen. No more sickness. Amen. It's difficult for us many times when um, someone who is in agony, who is in pain, and I have gone through pains, Actually, my wife just went through one during the course of the week. It was only toothache. But you need to see the dancing. From one end of the room to another end, just jumping and if the pain was just too much, and you cannot hold her down. I have had many pains in the past. Is it uh, the one from hernia or the one from uh, uh, a pile or whatever you call it? It will go all over your body like as if you should just, you, you even want to pray for death. When now God comes down, many times he will just put his hand, storm, be still, and that will end it. And many times he will say, your time is up. Come over. All these things that I've explained to you, either the one of my wife or myself, they, they will come, we pray, they go, they come back. If it is not from the hand, at times it's going to be from the leg. If not from the leg, it will be from another side. But in heaven, Amen. and that is real. Amen. May God help you and I to believe that. Amen. No storm on Kenyan shore. Amen. They were questioning Jesus here, yeah, carest thou not? Had Jesus not proved himself many times before? We too can look into our lives when there are cases or just one storm or just one situation as if Jesus has never done anything. Then we are saying, does he care? May God forgive us. Amen. Jesus cares. Yes. We should think of what he has done in the past. I must admit, when we are overwhelmed with great storms of life, one may think that Jesus doesn't care. But we can think of different times that he has answered our prayers. Yeah. And may God help us not to forget that, Amen. that Jesus truly and really cares. It is good for us to remember that. Yeah. The ship that has Christ in it, though may be touched, can never sink. Amen. Can never sink. Amen. Our ship will not sink. Amen. That storm will not kill you. Amen. The storm in my life, even right now, I have that assurance by the grace of God, only by the grace of God, that it will not kill me. Amen. And actually, God's children, if we want to really apply the word of God, the children of God. It is true, we use the word death generically, don't we? Mm -hmm. But they don't die. No. Mm -hmm. 
they move from one life of a temporal life, the life that knows pain and sorrow, they move into another new life that knows none of this. Amen. the Lord please encourage us. Amen. You know, Jesus proved that. When I read this passage, it's like um, when Jesus now woke up, he arose, verse 39 says, he arose, he did not even turn to them. He didn't talk to them first because Jesus is a man of action. He really want, he wanted to prove to them that you think I don't care? You think I cannot do this? You think this is bigger for me to do? And the first thing that he did, he rebuked. And in the name of Jesus, Amen. that wind Amen. in our lives, Amen. in our church, Amen. in our family, Amen. the ones that we are crying to God to do something about, yes. in Jesus' name, Amen. may he arise Amen. and rebuke the wind now. Amen. He arose and he rebuked the wind and he said unto the sea, this is what I've made. Why, why are you raging as if, if I ask you to stop, where I ask you to stop is, where are you stopping? Why are you now raging as if you are now in control of yourself? I'm the one that has made you. Peace. Be still. And the wind ceased. Not even a minute after. I believe it was instant. Yeah. I believe it happened as the words were coming out of Jesus. Jesus cares. Yes. He cares for you. Amen. He cares for me. Yes. And then there was a great calm. I just like that. Mm. A great calm. Mm. A great calm. Mm. Get this. Jesus cares when you are burdened. When you are all alone, when you are heartache, when you are in, a, in your misery, mm -hmm. discouraged, in sorrow, when your heart is pained, mm -hmm. when you have been tried and you even failed, mm -hmm. do you know Jesus cares? Yes. Even in that situation? Mm -hmm. When you are in a deep grief and no relief, mm -hmm. when your tears are flowing unbidden, <laughs> When you are green weary and long, heavy hearted, in pain, I do that from time to time because this, um, I know God's children are praying for me that God will heal me of my hemorrhoid, the, the pile that I had. When the pain starts, I'll be calling, Jesus, but you are looking at me now. That pain is like as if it will kill me. But again, my consolation, my confidence, my encouragement is that Jesus, you are looking at me. I don't think you are laughing at this. I don't think you are looking at me and you are smiling. It's good for him. Jesus, I'm in pain. It's too much for me. I can't bear this. It's just too much. I'm from nowhere. And that's my testimony. I know it still comes back that I am believing Jesus yeah. is able to make it permanent. Yes. But the point I'm making is Jesus is closer yeah. than we think. Yeah. Even in our troubles, yeah. even in our sorrows, yeah. even in our needs, yeah. Jesus is closer. Yeah. They thought he was dreaming. They thought he was fast asleep. He didn't know what was going on. When Jesus was ever present, Amen. he knew what was going on. Even when our loved one passed the veil, Jesus cares. Yes. Jesus cares. Yes. Jesus cares. Yes. That shouldn't give us any uh, cause to now be questioning what we know. 
questioning our faith and belief in the power of God to care for us in every situation. Jesus cares. He cares for the young ones. He cares for the adults. He cares for the aged. He cares for the little tiny babies. First Peter 5, 7 says, if we cast all our care upon him, then we will see and know that indeed he cares for us. Verse 40 of our text. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? May the Lord increase our faith. Amen. That is my problem. That is the problem of us, many of us. No faith. Why are you so fearful? You know, fear is the opposite of faith. May the Lord today replace Amen. all fears Amen. and cares with faith Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. And then in verse 41, we see it reads, and they feared exceedingly. Now, listen to that. That fear is not now of the uh, storm again. Now they are now so afraid, they are now so fearful, that just at the word of Jesus, Hallelujah. this thing that we say is going to kill us has now stopped. Amen. They are now more afraid of the power that stopped the storm <laughs> than the war of the storm itself. You know, we're saying God is bigger, bigger than my mountains, than our problems. God is bigger. May we see that picture today. God is bigger. They had a testimony. What manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. You and I can have similar testimony. What manner of man is Jesus that my storm, my sorrow, my heartache, my sickness, my fears, immediately Jesus spoke, they disappeared. That can be your testimony today. That is what I'm praying God will give to me as my testimony. Because as you will bring your fears and your storms to God, I will do the same. And we want to pray that at the end, this testimony, that we can stand up and say that even the wind and the sea, that was theirs. Their storm was, or their, their, their storm has to do with the wind and the sea. You know yours. I know mine. And just because they called Jesus into it, and Jesus came into it, and he still that a uh, 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 storm and he said peace be still and there was a great calm Amen. Amen. I want to believe we have people present here today that have their winds and their seas and as we are going down on our knees to pray I want to assure you Amen. once more yes. yes Jesus is real Amen. yes Jesus Yes. You feel like bringing your storm to him? I'm inviting you to the altar. I'm inviting you to the altar to come and expose all those storms that the enemy is telling you that you will perish, that the enemy is telling you that we will kill you. All those things that the enemy is saying, that is the end of it. You want to mention them to him and you want to tell him, please, Jesus, speak peace. So this my storm, he will speak to them and they will disappear in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing the closing song. Though the angry sword
our heavenly Father, Amen. we thank you. Amen. We love you. We have heard that you care. Lord, come and calm our storms. Come and give us peace from our troubled hearts. Lord, we thank you. You are present among us. You are at work. Lord, we come before you with our storms. Roll them over. Lord, grant us your perfect peace. Save the souls. Sanctify, baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Heal the sick bodies. Revive us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.